in the mix with Chris Rock. I'm Alec Baldwin. I'm here with the gorgeous Gina. I'm Larry King, and you're watching In the Mix. I'm Kelly Ripa, and you're watching In the Mix. I'm Matt Lauer, and you're watching In the Mix. I'm Kathy Lee. And I'm Hoda. And you're watching In, in the, the mix. mix. I'm Bethany Frankel, and you're watching In the Mix. In the Mix. Welcome to this episode of In The Mix here at The Cutting Room. I'm Gina Jordan. Now let's give it up for those hardworking punks behind the camera, shall we? That's right. Give yourselves a hand. Now our first guest appeared on In The Mix just last summer. This all-star polo player kicked my butt in an obstacle course race on ellipticos. Watch this. <laughs> I'm, com I'm coming at you. Come on, This come is on. some grace. It's just so gripping. You can do it. How you doing, John? Oh, trigger's really good. Trigger's really good. I'm coming over the finish line. That's right. I was giving it. Oh, you're cheating too. Oh, I see how it is. Oh. Nee, 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 nee. Nice. This thing's awesome, though. This is very cool. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. All right, you won. You won. Is this no, we tied. we tied. We tied? We yeah, tied. We... No, that wasn't a tie, right? I want a rematch. Do you hear me? I want a rematch. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together over here for all-star polo player, Nick Roldan. Woo! How you doing, Nick? Good, how are you? Thank you so much for stopping by today. My pleasure. How do you like our new In The Mix set? I love it, I really do. I think it's cozy, it's cute. Thank you. You guys have done well. Cozy and cute at the cutting room. I wanna just take you back in time a little bit. You were on our first season of In The Mix, and you and I had an elliptigo race, which was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. As you just saw, we know that it was, it was one of those things we weren't sure if we tied or if you won. Now, he really won. We know he really won. But this is something that you didn't know was that I was on a really high gear. Okay. And apparently Khan told me after, like, I'm so sorry, Gina, but you were on a super high gear and that's why you had a hard time pedaling. So you're saying I didn't really win. I'm saying that I want a rematch. You want a rematch, okay. And right now, outside, set up. Are you ready? Elliptical? No, I'm just kidding. I'm, just, I'm, just I'm ready. <laughs> You're like, I would it. not do that right yeah, now. Yeah, I don't know. Sometime, can we can we do a rematch? Yeah, I think we should. Totally, Definitely. because apparently I was in a high gear. No, that's I'm fine. just saying. I'll, I'll accept that. It's fine. We could do it again. It was fun because we were racing around John Stewart and Lindsay Lohan. That was a yep. fun studio. That was, was the uh, studio. East Hampton Studios. Yeah, it was fun. We heard that you were in London recently, right? I was. I played the season there. I was there for two months. And uh, we actually just finished the Westchester Cup, which is... For polo, it's like the most historical tournament in the world, and it's basically the best of English against the best of the United States. We came up a little short. We lost in overtime, but... Uh, Boo! But it was in the, I, know, I know. No, that Shocking. must have been hard, though. That no, it was tough. Hard. You know, playing on their home turf, and we didn't have any of our horses, so we were playing Lent horses. Look, it was an amazing experience, and... Um, you know, the Westchester Cup's gonna be played next year here in the United States, so hopefully we can get it back. Fantastic. So, yeah. will you have a chance in 2014 yes. to win back the title? Yeah, of course. We know that Nick owns about 40 horses. Yeah, give or, give take, or take a few. Right. Give or yeah. take a few. Right. So you don't even get to take any of your horses out to London. You have to actually ride on other people's horses. Right. How does that work? In this tip, uh, particular situation, yeah. Um, because it's only one game, it costs a lot of money to ship a bunch of horses there. So um, we were on a budget and so we basically, what we had to do is we had to rent horses that were already there in England. So it's tough, you know, you're not riding your own horses. It's a huge disadvantage Do you guys us. fight over horses? Like, no, I want Ed, you take yeah, all. I like, mean, how does that work? I mean, every player has a different style. And I think we all know that and each player likes a certain horse. So we try to make everyone happy, but you know, it's, it's tough. It's very tough. And you know, the English team, uh, is playing on their best horses and on horses that they've been playing all season. The game went into overtime, yeah. and what was the score at that point? 12-11. I mean, the game was epic. I mean, it was an amazing game. There was 20,000 people there. His Royal Highness, Prince Charles, was there. Um, wow. He's the one who gave us the trophies. So it was an honor and a great experience. You know, we would have liked to have won, but... So now, In The Mix recently went over to nickroldan.com, and we caught a photo of you with Prince Harry and Prince William holding a cup. Yeah, that was the Westchester Cup. So that was prior to the game. And I played a charity match with Will and Harry and the captain of the English team. After the presentation, they brought the cup and we took pictures with them. That's super cool. Yeah. How long have you known 
Prince Harry and Prince William, like, are they like your boys? Is that your crew? I've met them in 2000, 2001, I think, mm -hmm. uh, through mutual friends. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, pretty much since then, you know, every time that there's an opportunity for me to play in a charity match with them, you know, they, they try to include me. So they're great guys. You know, Will's now a father, so. Did you have a chance to see the Royal Baby George? I haven't. But I did get to play. I, I was with Will. Three, three days prior to Kate having the baby. Um, we were playing a, a, a charity match and uh, he was you know, super excited and a little nervous at the same time. This is kind of cool. This is sort of like our royal connection. So he was excited. He was looking forward to being a dad. Yeah, very That's excited. That's kind of cool. He yeah. seemed like he was super excited and They're beautiful baby. They're both great guys. They're very down to earth. The baby's beautiful, so. Did you ever meet the Duchess, Kate? I did. I met her in, uh, in another polo event in Santa Barbara. And how was she? She's really nice. Really nice. Is she as beautiful in person? Yeah. She yep. seems like it. Yeah. Nice. Met her briefly, but she's very nice. Very cool. Yeah. So you have an event up and coming with Prince Harry's charity, right? Right. It's September 14th in San Diego. And basically, they um, sent to Bali, which is the charity that Prince Harry had started, had approached me about doing something with them in San Diego. Prince Harry, Harry unfortunately, won't be there, but. Um, you know, it's going to be a great event. Is it a public event where yeah, anybody can attend? Event. Yeah, I mean, you can go on the website. website. Yeah. Sente Bali is a charity that is that basically they they help underprivileged kids in the Lesotho uh, region in, in Africa, and they build schools and they build uh, hospitals. It's a beautiful oh. charity. So what's up and coming for you, polo wise? Now you're going to be onto the West Palm Beach season. Yeah, well, there may be a chance of me playing here in the Hamptons, which would be great. Awesome. You know, it's always good to be back here. And then September, I'm doing a lot of traveling. I'll be on the West Coast for, um, for the Sente Bali event. And right. maybe we might be doing the Rally for Kids with Cancer event that I did last year here in the Hamptons. Yeah. We might be doing it in LA cool. in September. Um, and then I'm going to China to play polo. Yeah. Then give us a scoop on that. Yeah. Um, basically, it's the World Cup, which is a tournament uh, hosted by a Chinese sponsor in outside of Beijing. And uh, it's a 10 day tournament and it's basically there's five countries, um, Argentina, England, the United States, I think Australia and maybe New Zealand. Wow. Yeah. And then I'm back in Florida for the policy for the hot big season. So our team here at In The Mix, we're going to stay on top of what you're doing. Right. NickRoldan.com. Nice. And then, of course, they can go purchase tickets to your up and coming uh, yeah. charity event yeah. with uh, Prince Harry. And we're going to have that rematch. OK. Yeah. You heard it. We're, we're doing the rematch. I'm here for the next month, so you tell me when. Really? Yeah. I'm so glad that you got to stop by. We're so happy we have our royal connection going on here. <laughs> we know next year that on U.S. soil, you're going to kick the crap we're out of that other team, right? taking the trophy back. That's right. We're bringing it back. Next year, they're going to take that trophy back. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, guys. Let's give Thank it up you. for Nick Roldan. <laughs> hey, we love Nick. Next up, the polo theme continues. That's right, In The Mix recently hit the Hamptons to attend opening day at the Bridgehampton Polo Club Challenge. Now that first match was hosted by everybody's favorite Hamptonite, Christy Brinkley. I'm having a great time. Yeehaw! Well, maybe not. This kind of horseplay isn't exactly down and dirty. Think more like a glamorous Ralph Lauren fashion ad, literally. Polo is uh, accessible and for everyone and a fun thing to do with your kids. The Bridgehampton Polo Club's Polo Challenge has become a tradition for the past 16 seasons. I love the excuse to finally get out here. Yet the actual polo match is an entertaining backdrop to the VIP social scene. Everyone used to laugh at me because I probably would be one of the few chicks that would sit around and down front and actually pay attention to the game. Over the years, a bevy of famous faces have graced the ground. Aretha Franklin, Woody Harrelson, Jessica Alba, Jessica Biel, Christina Applegate, Natalie Portman, Brooke Shields, Adrian Grenier, The Trumpster, and so many more. Beautiful people are here. It's wonderful. This summer season marks the 17th annual Polo Challenge, seven consecutive Saturdays of polo matches through August 17th. Going, going, going. Matias McGreeny. ITM recently captured all the action opening day this season. You know what it really is, as much as everybody thinks sort of Memorial Day weekend kicks off the summer, there's something so quintessential about polo kicking off the summer. I have Christy Brinkley standing behind me watching the match. I am here in the mix with the one and only quintessential Hamptons representative, Miss Christy Brinkley. Yay!
I love being in the mix with Christy Brinkley. First of all, cheers to a beautiful Hampton season, by the way. We saw you do the coin toss today. Yes. And, and you were able to keep the coin, too. Yes. So have you ever done a coin toss before in the past? No, I'm always late. <laughs> I always get here about the middle of the game. So I didn't know anything about the coin toss or what was expected, but it was a very nice honor for them to ask me to do that. We're looking like it's all about having fun, but today is about giving back. Uh, we raise money today for breast cancer research, which is fantastic. So why Polo this year? Well, I mean, you mentioned breast cancer, and, you know, as we know, this is a... a really epidemic proportions from Manhattan to Montauk. Everybody sort of pinpoints their specialty, whether it's medical research or like Julie has built the breast center wing at Southampton Hospital. We really need it. And this is such a fun way to raise money. Next up, Christy Brinkley reveals her longtime hobby. You're not going to want to miss this, so don't move. In the mix. Just point. With no word Just speak. To turn. Just share. But you saw me as you naturally would. And showed me Just how point. Much I still Just speak. To learn. Just share. And the smart. Inspired by you. LG Cinema 3D Smart TV. This episode of In the Mix is presented by LG. Life's good. In the mix. Welcome back to this episode here at the Cutting Room. I'm Gina Jordan. To Long Island and happy summer to everybody. ITM's been bringing you all the action from opening day match at the 17th annual Bridgehampton Polo Club Challenge where Miss Supermom and model Christy Brinkley played host to hundreds of VIPs. We're always so supportive to the Hamptons. You live in the Hamptons. You know, you're, you're one of those people that you're not just buying a house out here for uh, during the season. Um, you're out here year round, correct? Yep. Uh, Children have all gone to school here. Um, since Alexa was a little kid. I saw that beautiful oh, cover that you and Sailor did, and she has completely grown into her own woman. She's absolutely stunning. Stunning. Both my daughters are both blossoming, and it's so beautiful to see the two of them together, hoping to, to do their share to make it a better place, and I couldn't be more proud of them. The you know, you make raising children look easy. It's all smoke and mirrors, believe me. You're good like that because you smile through it, but it's not an easy task, and you have three beautiful children. You can't do it without putting in the time, energy, and consistency, and, uh, you know, there's no way to shortcut any of those. Virus. All of Christie's children, they're graduates of the Raw School. Just recently I did an interview with Liza Minnelli and they asked me what was one of your most memorable performances and it was at the Raw School. The Starlight Ball, yeah. which you have hosted before many yeah. times and, and, yeah. and supported. Year we had Cindy Lauper. On uh, previous years we've had Alexa Ray Joel. <laughs> it's an amazing event. Of course we were there for Alexa. I remember her very first demo with her beautiful curly handwriting. Oh. I mean she's a poet. She can work words to move you. Music is the art uh, that I think I admire the most because it is so evocative and so emotional and you know a song can take you back in time it can it can get you up out of your chair dancing it can uh, it can do anything when I interviewed Alexa uh, and she we were talking about her demo that year we were at your parents house in Sag Harbor oh, yeah. and I just want to say that your parents were so lovely and beautiful your mother who you look so much like your mom they were such beautiful people My parents were the greatest people in the world I lost them both last summer on the 14th just a couple days ago was the year uh, marked a year that my dad and and very shortly it'll be the a year for my mom because she had a stroke the very next day they were so madly in love they always said that they couldn't live without each other and indeed they couldn't and I miss them so much they were just so full of life and love and so amazing and I have people all day long coming up to me in Sag Harbor and saying Christy, I loved your parents, so they made their mark here. I'm one of them because I had the pleasure of meeting them both, 
and there were such lovely people. So your ex-husband Billy Joel, who I know you're still close with and friends with, and of course is Alexa's father. Well, you still go though to see uh, Billy perform, right? You'll go to some of his well, concerts. I've been doing my own performing the I last know. couple years. First of all, so. people should know this. This woman can sing. Did you see her on Broadway? When are we going to see you on Broadway again, by the way? I don't know. I don't know. I would have loved to have seen you on the London stage. How was that experience for you, being on the London stage? I can't say it was a dream come true because I didn't even dare to dream anything like that. It was just a totally unexpected, totally amazing, incredible experience. I remember back in the day you said to me, no, I can't sing. I don't have a voice to sing. You said, that's just my, my thing. And then boom, cut to six years later and she's entertaining hundreds of fans. Hundreds and hundreds. For how many nights did you perform? For the better part of two years. I I did Broadway. Uh, my first run was, I believe it was an 11 week run. And then I went off to London and uh, I think I was there five weeks and then I came back and did a return engagement by popular demand on Broadway. <laughs> I love saying that. Can you blame me? It doesn't surprise you though. You have so many fans that probably really that love to see you singing on stage. It surprises me like crazy and then I headlined the national tour and one of the places that just I could not believe was the Pantages Theater in Los Angeles and I grew up in Los Angeles and I went to the Pantages Theater when I was a child to go to the Academy Awards because that was where they originally had the Academy Awards and it's just the most gorgeous theater and I could not believe that I left Los Angeles to become an artist, an illustrator, a painter and that I came back as a as Roxy Hart in Chicago on Broadway. It was amazing. You do paint. You are an artist. That's what I thought I was going to be. Someday I'll get back to that. Do you still paint today just for fun? I paint. Um, I haven't painted in a while because I've been so busy. But, um, but you know, I'll do like, every now and then I just can't resist. Like, I have to paint a portrait of one of my kids or a bouquet of flowers from my garden. Right now, are you taking off some time or are you actually gearing up for a project? Uh, no, it's been a really busy summer. Um, and I, I've got some projects that I can't, it's too soon to discuss, but I that, that uh, I think ladies are going to love, like, one of my uh, products that I'm coming out with shortly. Um, I think you'd be such a fantastic oh, host cool. on on one of the shows. Oh, you know, what, don't you yes. think it'd be great on the View? I could do something like that. Um, I know that they just filled the seat there with uh, Jenny McCarthy, and she's going to be um, she's going to be so fun because she's so spontaneous yes. and just loosey goosey, you know. So, um, but. Yeah, maybe something like that might be in the cards. Any other events that you're going to be at this summer season? I'm going to be returning uh, to Guildhall with Celebrity Autobiography. It is the most hilarious show. I mean, the audience was howling, howling. Always a pleasure to sit down with Miss Christy Brinkley and looks absolutely gorgeous. It's always a pleasure. Thank you, such a pleasure. Cheers, Long Island. We had a great time hanging out with Christy Brinkley at opening day of the poll matches good stuff now still to come it's a screening of a film that nobody's seen yet that's right percy jackson sea of monsters don't go anywhere we'll be right back In the mix. just point with nowhere to look. just move into just share you me as you naturally would and showed me just point much I still just move to learn. just share and the smart inspired by you LG cinema 3d smart TV this episode of in the mix is presented by LG life's good this episode of In the Mix is catered by Delmonico's Kitchen, located at 207 West 36th Street and 7th Avenue in New York City. In the Mix. Welcome back to this episode of In the Mix here at The Cutting Room. I'm Gina Jordan. Right now we are dishing out all the action you've been missing. Next up, we've got a sneak peek of a movie that's family friendly and you're going to want to watch. Percy Jackson, Sea of Monsters. There's no pressure for me because I didn't direct the movie, so that's great. I've been in the Hamptons for three and a half weeks now, so I am more relaxed than I've ever been. So 
what's the difference between a Hampton screening like this and a big Hollywood premiere, sir? This is much more intimate, but you know, uh, yeah, yeah, it's nicer, I guess. It's a little bit smaller. It's exciting for me. I'm actually, I grew up coming out here. My mom has a place really just down the street, so I used to come to this movie theater when I was a kid. Is that why we're here? Because everybody's at your mom's house? <laughs> right, exactly. The whole cast. But um, it's it's really it's exciting for me knowing that I you know I've been here when I was a kid and now I'm back for a movie I'm in. That's really cool. My mom's really excited. Ten years ago they said Southampton was just a little sleepy town, but tonight it's more like Hollywood East. Several VIPs, including Richard Gere, Star Jones, and Matthew Broderick, came out to enjoy an intimate screening of Percy Jackson's Sea of Monsters. Are you excited to see the film? And that counts for you too, Star. Are you excited? Really what did I just say? We were out there. I said I love Percy Jackson. I can't wait. Several famous faces attended the intimate screening of Percy Jackson's Sea of Monsters with their children, including Star Jones and her god kids. Miss Star Jones is your godmother. Oh, please. Oh, please. All they think about is, I'm just sorry, where are we eating? And they just got here, so they're visiting. Their dad's doing a movie in Boston um, with Denzel Washington, and their mom brought them down to see me. So. I'm hanging. Dad is Antoine Fuqua, director of Training Day and Oscar winner Denzel Washington's upcoming film, The Equalizer. What do you like to do during a movie? Are you going to get some popcorn before? What's the routine here? Yeah, I'm going to get some popcorn. Yeah. I don't like popcorn, but I'll get something else. I'm hoping they have hot dogs. I heard there was a prophecy about me. It would seem that the prophecy was referring to our annihilation. The film is about a group of young people who have previously discovered that they are in fact descendants of Greek gods uh, in combination with human beings. So they're half-gods, called half-bloods. We live in the only place that is safe for our kind. Until now. What is that? The barrier, which is a protective barrier around their camp, is weakened, destroyed, and Percy Jackson, who is the son of Poseidon, and his team of friends have to go out and capture the only thing that could possibly save the barrier, which is the Golden Fleece of Myth. Tor Frodenthal directed Sea of Monsters, which is the sequel to the 2010 film Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Lightning Thief. Directed by Chris Columbus, who is best known for Mrs. Doubtfire, Rent, and the first two Harry Potter films. How did they end up choosing this cast? I'd seen Logan Lerman in 310 to Yuma, and it was one of those situations where you know you're seeing someone who's going to be a major star, and he's a one. And I thought his performance as a young boy in that movie was amazing. And I fought uh, pretty hard to cast him in the first Percy Jackson. Excuse me, we're trying to get to Florida. <gasps> Our kind of fan. Pricey. Maybe we should have flown commercial. There's so many kids that came here tonight that are so excited to see the film. Uh, what makes this version different than, of course, the version that Chris Columbus directed? Uh, well, I'd say it's more tonally accurate to what what the book is. And, uh, you know, the book is fast-paced and funny and a lot of fun, and that's, and that's exactly what this movie is, you know? It's good, it's good, you know, family entertainment. What was it like to be directed by Tor? A lot of fun, you know? Yeah, he's great. You know, he's so energetic and... Uh, you know, kind of, you know, just fun, and we had a good time with the material. You may recognize Logan from the film The Perks of Being a Wallflower, starring alongside Emma Watson. Do you think if people knew how crazy you really were, no one would ever talk to you? Come on, let's go be psychos together. Logan's star is on the rise, with several films premiering this season, including Noah, alongside Russell Crowe, and the only living boy in New York. So it's no surprise he welcomed the slower pace out east. Are you on vacation? Yeah, this is like, it's ridiculous to call this work. You Did know? Alexandra give you a little tour of the Hamptons because she apparently spent some time here growing up? She did give me a tour of the Hamptons. She's a New Yorker and this is like, you know, her, uh, I'm from Los Angeles. Slayer. Yeah. So what have you seen here so far in our fair town? Uh, well, I went to Cooper's Beach, I guess, and, uh, Saw some of the town again here, but we, we haven't been here for that long, you know, but got to bike around a little bit. Logan Sea of Monsters co-star and Hampton tour guide is Alexandra Daddario, the New York City native who most recently starred in Hall Pass alongside Owen Wilson and Jason Sudeikis. She says getting the chance to star in the Percy Jackson series of films 
completely changed her life. What's it like to be in the series? Um, it's amazing. Um, I mean, getting the first movie was a huge break for me in my career, and also it's it's you're sort of jumping into something that's already known and already loved. So there's something really really cool about that, um, and it's just really exciting to play a character that that people look up to and that people love. And um, I feel really lucky to be part of it. It's a chariot of damnation. Looks like a New York City cab. Same difference. When it comes to this episode of the saga, so to speak, what makes it different? What sets it apart? Um, I think that this, this, you know, this is the second movie we've made. I think that this movie um, is a little bit closer to the books than the first one, which I think fans will love. I'm blonde in this movie. I was brunette in the first, and the character's blonde. Just one example of sort of some of the changes. Did you actually made. change your hair color, or did I you wear did. a wig? I went blonde, yes. The newest cast member is Stanley Tucci. The Oscar-nominated actor steps in as Dionysus, the god of wine who must guide the kids on their quest to the Sea of Monsters. You could just listen to me for one moment. I am listening. You want to go on a quest? Oh, it must be Thursday. I'm serious. Yeah, I'm I... absolutely sure that this is going to work. <sighs> it was such a good year. What was it like to uh, work with the director and, and to be in such a fantastic series of the books? Well, I was really excited because I like the books. I read the books with my son. Um, I liked the first movie. The tour was wonderful. I think it's a great thing. Stanley Tucci was someone that I admired for a long time. You know, I loved movies like Big Night or The Devil Wears Prada, all these amazing performances that he gave. I think it was kind of a no-brainer of, you know, shooting for the stars, hoping that maybe we would land him and, you know, we're lucky enough to did, to you know have done so. I like to work with this man. Amazing. I was just saying, talking about him actually. He's like such a such a gentleman and so wonderful and I mean extremely talented and really a joy to watch. And um, you have all these great actors that come in and out of the Percy Jackson movies and being able to watch them and learn from them and and act with them is is incredible. Oh, Tooch is a really nice guy. The Tooch is. Uh... <laughs> A lot of fun to work with. Uh, it was brief, though. You know, he came in and out, you know, pretty quickly, uh, and uh, just you know, went through all of his scenes. You know, we in that like block of time, like being like a week or so, nine days, ten days. Uh, but we had a lot of fun. I'm pretty much the straight guy. I just got to stand there. He gets this great character, and it's fun to watch the choices that he uh, that he made. It's a great thing when you can make a movie that your kids can see. That doesn't always happen. According to Stan, the Tooch Jr. will have to wait a few years to see Dad's more explicit films, including the upcoming Hunger Games sequel and Tucci's tumultuous love story alongside actress Alice Eve, Some Velvet Morning. Velvet Morning wasn't a movie your kids could see, so I can imagine. No, nobody's kids should see, no. Alice Eve, what was it like to, uh, to, to work with her? She enjoyed working with you tremendously. One of her favorite scenes that she was iconic was when you were doing the red lipstick. Yeah. What was it like to work with Missy? Alice's idea, it was a really good idea that I would put the lipstick on her. I thought it was a really wonderful idea, and we did it. And, you know, it was a very odd film. I mean, it was nine days of shooting. Um, it's really more like a play as it's written than a film. But you're working with a wonderful director like Neil. It, it's just... It was so much fun. Are your children here this evening? Or are they going to see this film tonight? My son is here, yeah. Fantastic. And so he hasn't seen, obviously, seen any clips or dad, no dailies, nothing yet. He saw, I think he saw some of the clips, yeah. Now, doing a film that's 3D, is it any different creating the film when you're actually shooting well, no, it? No, actually, uh, this was done afterward. So the 3D was done afterward. So we just shot sort of normally. But I've shot films in 3D. Some have been hard, some have, are great. Devil Wears Prada wasn't 3D, though. No, no, it was not. Thank God. The last I heard, the Golden Fleece was in the Sea of Monsters, what the humans called the Bermuda Triangle, a place not only a satyr should be afraid of. So, the answer is no. No. I'm sorry, Annabelle. Annabeth. Whatever. It's a terrible idea. All right, guys, so go check out The Tooch and Company in Percy Jackson's Sea of Monsters, which hits theaters starting August 7th. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Thanks so much for watching. And, I, of course, I thank all of you hardworking people out there. Give yourselves a hand. We look forward to seeing you next time in the mix.